Uh, well, thanks, Beck. We will. It's a it's a tough time there. Um, so far, they've been uh, you know able to able to mostly stay stay active, but uh, you know the whole whole situation is just very fluid and changing day to day. We're all we're all thinking about them. All right. Well, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Uh, not a ton of new viewer news, but a couple of things we should talk about and a little bit of uh, admin stuff, too. Um, default viewer has been updated within the last several days. I'm pretty sure it was since the last TPV meeting. Um, so you'll be seeing that as an update. There's a couple of kind of significant changes there. One is a fix for... Um, the Mac OS updater, uh, newer versions of Mac OS are not going to be happy with the updater. Um, and this one should actually work correctly going forward. Um, of course, if you're trying to update from an older build, you could still get burned by that. So you might actually wind up having to do a manual update to get to this one. But once you get to this one, you should be OK until Mac breaks something else. Um, Let's see, another change that came out with that viewer is that we're using uh, Python 3 uh, internally for viewer builds. Um, so if you are trying to build our, uh, our repo using our standard instructions, you will need to change your practice a little bit. Um, install Python 3 and install auto build version 3. And I think we've updated the relevant docs for that, but if anybody runs into snags, uh, you know, drop me a line. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, the admin thing is, uh, there's a fair amount of interest internally in changing the time for these meetings. Um, these are like right in the middle of lunch for the West Coast crew, and uh, <laughs> it's kind of an unpopular slot. Um, I realize that no matter what other time we pick, it's going to be inconvenient for somebody. But I did want to take a kind of a overall uh, temperature of the of the folks here. Um, you know, if we did move this by uh, an hour or two, um, would you rather see it go earlier or later than it is now? Just feel free to type things in chat or uh, whatever works for you. Okay, well, sounds like people are mostly leaning toward later. Um, so we will try to find something. Uh, we kind of need to regularize the schedule in terms of which weeks it happens at, too. Um, I, uh, ideally, I would try to keep it out of phase with the content creators meeting. Um, so it might set it to be something like second and fourth. Fridays of the month, which usually is would wind up being a different week than content creators. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know if I, I think right now we're just doing it kind of alternating weeks, right? So I assume nobody's super attached to the choice of particular week.
Okay, we'll look into uh, getting that sorted out then and uh, let you know. Um, I think we have a mailing list for this group or for this meeting um, to to announce updates. Uh, I'll try to try to keep everybody in the loop with whatever we wind up doing. All right, uh, I had one. Yeah, the op there's a yeah, there's a TPV TPV deer list or something like that. Maybe not everybody's subscribed to it, but yeah, we can send a message to open source list too. All right, uh, I had one other question, which is going to be super inside baseball, but if people who deal with the login code in the viewer might have an idea about this. Um, we got a few different flags that get sent from login uh, when people when people first log in and there's stuff like what's the name of your initial outfit and you know it's all it's all just relevant to first time users. Um, and there's a flag called gendered. With a with a D at the end, which looks like it used to mean something, and we've just been always sending a Y for it for the last probably since Viewer Two came out. Um, so you know something in excess of ten years. Uh, so the question is, if we just stopped sending that, would anybody's viewer fall over and die? Um, I, I, as far as I can tell, it's just kind of a. Uh, piece of, uh, you know, kind of a junky relic of past times, but of course it's still possible that somebody's got some dependency on it. Um, so, yeah, let me know if that would cause problems. So at some point we'll probably try to yank it out otherwise. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks for checking. All right, well, let's see, we could do updates. Oh, I, I haven't talked about other viewers. Uh, still trying to get the performance improvements viewer out. Uh, we've had a succession of bugs that have kind of snuck in and needed to be sorted. Um, most not catastrophic, but you know things that are serious enough that we wouldn't want to put it out to RC without fixing them. Uh, hoping that'll quiet down. We'll be able to get an RC out. Um, that's pro if. That's probably going to be our next default viewer unless things uh, drag on a lot longer than we're, we're hoping they do. Uh, other viewers, we've got the performance floater work. Um, the, the latest discussion today, we're talking about maybe pulling that in with the performance viewer because just because we've got a lot of viewers and it's hard to, it's hard to get a lot of different things released um, independently. Um, and a few other older viewers that we're trying to kind of revive, uh, like legacy profiles and the copy paste uh, viewer, which has some uh, updates to the way that the uh, in world building works. Um, and uh, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll have more to say about those in the in the not too distant future. If anybody. Uh, any of the other Linden folks here have updates. Um, uh, Brad, do you want to say anything about the state of the MFA viewer? Yeah. Um, so I'm doing another pass in QA uh, for that, and it should be ready to promote to uh, to RC hopefully sometime next week. Um, I don't know if it's going to have its own release candidate build or if it's going to be merged into with the Mint Mint L branch uh, for RC DVD on that but yeah um, since that's a fairly isolated set of changes it's pretty likely it'll get pulled into some other viewer before it goes out yeah but uh, but yeah looks like that should be fairly shortly All right. Well, if anybody else has updates, uh, happy to hear them. Otherwise, we can go to general discussion parking lot.
Brad Kitty asks, what's the behavior if someone has MFA and logs in with a viewer without MFA? Yep. Uh, sorry, I was taking a bite of pizza there. Uh, <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so right now, uh, that will not be enforced for viewers that are without MFA. Um, so that's currently, you know, a grace period where we're allowing for, you know, to allow this feature to be, you know, distributed throughout all the, the relevant viewers. Um, in the long run, uh, yes, they will get an error message. So, so once that grace period is over, uh, the, that will return an error, uh, and it will prompt them to upgrade to a viewer that, that has MFA. Um, but that's uh, probably, at least, it's probably a ways off. <laughs> that, that will still only affect people who have explicitly opted into MFA. That's it. That's true. Yeah, uh, it's it's consistent with their user preferences on on accounts.secondlife.com. Um, so people who have opted in will see that, and it'll say if you want to log in with this viewer, you have to disable MFA. Uh, basically, is what the error message says. It'll be an error uh, error returned. Um, yeah, so it'll be. Uh, I think it'll be an, a new reason um, in the in the reason field of the of the login response. Oh, and that's required. Would be a new error if the um, if the user has uh, has MFA enabled, but the viewer doesn't support it. When the grace period is over, that will be a new error code. Okay. Yeah. There's also a question about if someone has MFA disabled. That we we shouldn't care oh. about that, right? That'll if if they're disabled and they log in with the viewer without MFA support. Yeah, that's that'll keep support. working. Yep. That. Yeah, so we're not actually checking for MFA unless people have it enabled for their account. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we've had some discussions about the poser. Um, I think the I think the biggest obstacle we ran into was that there wasn't any way to persist the results. Um, you know, you could. You know, the I think the poser would let you pose. Uh, it would let you pose yourself, but you'd be the only one who would see it. And what we what we really wanted was to have an experience where you could pose yourself and everybody would see it, which means that we would need to create, uh, you know, uh, uh, an additional animation or otherwise, you know, generate the appropriate bone state and send it out to everybody else. Um, so it's it's possible we would do that at some point. We're talking about some other projects related to uh, kind of avatar posing and movement now as well so um you know if we uh uh you know if, if those things uh progress along farther it could uh it could get incorporated as, as some sort of an aspect of that as well um so it's a little early to say at this point i guess i'm, I'm saying we're, we're tossing some various things around
Uh, would we object? I don't. I mean, I don't think so. The the only thing that would be a a you know concern from a uh you know kind of a, you know like really from an abuse perspective would be if you could pose other people's avatars um, as long as you're restricted to you know posing your own avatar. Um, I, I don't think that uh, there'd be a problem. Um, Beck, we should probably uh, uh, sync up later about this. There's, uh, you know, we'll, I, can, I can give you a little more context on it. Uh, to move on to a parking lot issue that's not at all related to what we were just talking about. Um, something that's come up this week is uh, uh, some internal work stepping on the toes of third-party viewer dev work um, and how we might better coordinate um, what we're doing with what y'all are doing. And uh, Does anybody have any thoughts on uh, like like specifically um there's a uh, uh project internally uh to automatically tune uh viewer performance like viewer settings based on your frame rate and beck has also done some work there and that's probably going to cause some conflicts here in a little bit um that we'll have to resolve uh and it looks like there's a miscommunication somewhere about exactly what the scope of Beck's work was. Um, and something similar happened with uh, something H was working on uh, with the, the physics shape importer. Um, so does anybody have any ideas on, on what they'd like to see or what, what, what Linden Lab can do to make ourselves more aware of uh, what you guys are working on? Because... Um, you telling us and then we forget doesn't seem to scale. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm at a loss. Uh, I mean, in the case of H's, stuff we we brought it up at content creators about as soon as we started working on it i i'm not sure you know i i can't be i can't be uh transparent in the past uh, you know but we can talk about what we're currently working on um you know we do try to bring up those kinds of things at content creators a lot of the time um but uh you know there uh, as as dave mentions there there are definitely cases where you know we either get our wires crossed or don't uh talk to people uh, about things we we should. I, I think there's probably, um, you know, it kind of goes the other way too, and that we don't necessarily know everything that, uh, you know, other viewers are, are up to. So, um, you know, it's, it's fairly easy to kind of stray into the same territory in that case. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to have you know show and tell discussions at this meeting or or you know talk about you know content related stuff at at content creators. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's obviously it obviously benefits everybody if we avoid uh, you know getting into either duplicated effort or uh, kind of you know stepping on on people's toes. Yeah, like uh, to have some transparency on on what it looks like from our side um, and H can fill in the blanks that I get wrong uh, uh, on the physics shape importer issue in particular well, actually H do you just want to talk about like like what the process was from you heard about it at a meeting and then what happened after that yeah I don't think there's really anything to go over I mean it was just uh, uh, you know we didn't know what we're 
what uh, each other was working on, and uh, we pulled this thing out of the out of out of the very distant past and started talking about it a bit. So, um, uh, yeah. So this <laughs> there turned out to be some overlap. Oh, uh, you can do. So I was uh, responding to Kitty's uh, show as part as hard without screen sharing. It's awkward, but yeah, you can you can do screen sharing on a media prem with hacks. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the service that we use for the internal meetings, um, but we do uh, like we we do all hands meetings and world uh, where all the Linden Lab employees log into a four a four corner regions and watch uh, presentations and world. It's a lag fest, but it works. Yeah, uh, PolySale mentions that wanting to have a more persistent record of meetings. Um, I know, you know, we have had times when people have, you know, internally here have, have tried to explicitly maintain meeting minutes. Um, it's usually turned out not to be sustainable just because they, they didn't have time to keep it up and it wound up, uh, uh, you know, it wound up kind of falling by the wayside over time. Um, I, you know, I'm I'm going to freely admit up front that I don't have time to do that. It's not anything personal against the meetings or anything. Um, but I, I know for a fact that if I, you know, promised that I was going to maintain meeting minutes, it would, you know, they would just fall behind and they wouldn't get posted. So, um, you know, if if anyone wants to, you know, work with us to try to to, to keep that stuff and, and would like us to help publicize it, we would be happy to do that. Um, I think I've added some, uh, I think I've added a link to the, like the content creators meeting about uh, about a site that, that sometimes has meeting minutes for, for that. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm open to suggestions, but uh, I know this is a problem that has, hasn't been, uh, you know, particularly solved successfully in the past. I, I would also say that, you know, even if we have perfect minutes of every meeting going back to the beginning of time, people are still going to come to the meeting and ask the same questions over and over. That's, that's just, uh, that's just the nature of meetings. And to, to Beck's point um, uh, about if there's an existing feature that uh, third-party viewers are using, um, as far as I know, it's never our intent to recreate a, a feature that third-party viewers have implemented um, without a really good reason. Uh, so if you see us doing that, chances are we're not aware of the feature. Um, and please let us know. Yeah, I mean, we, we certainly can't make any, you know, guarantee ahead of time that we would never do that for, for any reason. It's, it's entirely possible that it could happen, but, uh, you know, in practice, usually it's, it's not intentional. It's, you know, just we didn't know the feature was there. Yeah, 
Yeah, that that's one of the reasons this this meeting is here, but um probably more communication channels are needed. Um So what is this, one hour every two weeks? Uh, Petra, just a heads up on, on what sort of potential overlap in projects. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we do try to do that and we will continue to try to do that. Um, I think it's just a question of if there's any kind of specific things that help with the process. Oh yeah, we definitely like saving work. We usually have plenty of it without, uh, without doing any kind of extra duplication. Yeah, I mean, Beck, that, that's a good point. It's uh, There's uh, honestly one of the reasons that we don't we don't know our way around the other viewers as much as we should is, is just security policies. Um, that's, you, you know, we are not allowed to do it on our work machines, that sort of thing. So, um, it, it requires a fair amount of additional, uh, additional hardware and explicit fiddling to be able to, uh, you know, even see what's present in, in the other viewers. Right, and and that is the policy is, uh, uh, Lindens are allowed to use third-party viewers, but we have to do it on a uh, computer that's not associated with any of our Linden Lab accounts, and we now we aren't allowed to use our our Linden accounts. One thing that would be helpful there is if we could come up with a way to, uh, you know, have a have a sandboxed environment um, that was sufficiently you know, still considered sufficiently secure without having to physically have a separate machine, but uh, that's kind of a more it's more of a more of a topic to discuss with the the internal folks, I guess. Security. Yeah. People. Yeah, because uh, you can imagine what a honeypot things like uh, Tilia are. Uh, what's the name of the group? That's a weird name for a group. Oh. <laughs>
Gee, those uh, first two questions that came in the last two minutes are eerily familiar. It's like the stuff you see in our support channels all the time. Yeah, that, that's fun. Um, I wonder how much of the stuff we catch on the new users that you guys don't see. Because um, I know our support team deals with a lot of like general Windows issues. So how many layers do we have there? Like, like, like a lot of the folks who come in as new users, they see problems in SL that are related to, like, not having the right GL driver installed. Or just general, like, how do I do this thing? Not even things that, are, that they saw working before that aren't working now, but just general usability questions. I feel like I just recently changed the name of the, or somebody just recently changed the name of the uh, viewer variables that reference ATI to AMD.
Yep, now uh, M is ATI, is M is AMD. But poor AMD will never be able to change their OpenGL vendor string. Yeah, uh, so when we were in the, this is a little bit off topic, but when we were in the colo, um, one of the common outages would be internet problems in general. Um, and, and the cloud, um, uh, I haven't seen connectivity issues yet, but we've seen issues where like some central Amazon service that everything relies on, experience some issues and things hiccup. So the joke used to be, um, uh, if if you go hiking deep in the woods, uh, you should bring a couple strands of fiber with you. So if you get lost, you can toss the fiber on the ground and uh, ask the backhoe driver for directions. But I don't know what the cloud equivalent of that joke is yet. This thing on <laughs> dying up here. Maybe you have to post a, uh, a wrong answer to one of the AWS support boards or something. Get lots oh, of attention. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have learned that the public um, AWS status page is just full of lies. Like it's always, oh, everything's fine. And then there's like the login that you can get to um, for. Um, if you have an account with them, they'll show you where the actual issues are. <laughs> it's not fine. I will say that I continue to be impressed with how resilient the Second Life infrastructure is. How, like when we have these outages and bad things happen, um, not very many bad things happen to the users. Uptime is pretty good, and data retention is phenomenal.
Here's a fun question. Uh, has and I, I might be regretting this question as soon as I get the answer. Has anyone here ever had an asset just disappear from the asset store? Okay. Yeah, I thought I was going to regret it. <laughs> Hasn't happened to me. Yeah, glitches with stuff failing to res or failing to look correct is much more common. I'm not sure if I've ever had an asset get completely lost. Yeah, and like the stuff where like it disappears from your inventory isn't really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how like you uploaded something five years ago um, that has like a mesh asset and a texture asset. And then it's like, oh, what's this look like? And you drag it out of your inventory and the assets are still there. You could probably make the case that if it's that reliable, it means we don't do enough garbage collection. <laughs> I'm pretty sure given our current setup, it's a lot easier to lose things from inventory than to lose things from the asset store. Speaking of losing things, apparently uh, someone left the front door open to my house and I gotta go chase cats. Ah! <laughs> yep, thanks folks. All right. Well, I will wish uh, Dave luck on his cat retrieval duties. Uh, any other topics for for uh, discussion?
All right. Well, we can uh, probably run off and have an extra 10 minutes then. Um, oh, as I say, I'll, I'll try to let everybody know what we come up with on schedule. Next meeting may be at a different uh, different time and or day. Yeah. All right. Have a good weekend, all. Stay safe, everyone.